Hey guys, what's up? Aru. Natlan used to be the region within the game that literally has almost no information on. But as of right now, patch 4.2, we now have a little bit of that information which reveals more than just the Archon's name and possible inspirations. So welcome to another video where I walk into an active volcano. Today we'll be going over every bit of lore of Natlan and its coexisting dragon human community, the people of Natlan as well as their Archon Murata, their traditions and ideals as well as their fighting etiquette and practices, some notable locations and people mentioned within the region and finally a theory segment on what may be going on as well as what might happen later down the line with Natlan. Timestamps will be down in the description. Let's get started. Recently heard from Nouvellet, Natlan is known as the Nation of War, where ancient dragons have now evolved to the point where they coexist with human life. When I say coexist, I don't mean in a way that we'll find human-dragon hybrids in Natlan, but we would likely find dragon-slash-dinosaur-like creatures that are more or less friendly towards us. The best example we have is from the Walking Stick. Some of the members of the hero Tenox group have companions whose names match what we could call today as cryptids or even dinosaurs. We'll talk about Tenox and his other allies later on, but I would love to see characters similar to Neltharion or Alexstrasza in Natlan, since we've already seen some dragon-human hybrids like Zhongli and Sumi, and not to mention pure hydro dragons with human forms like Nouvellet, as well as animal-slash-human playable characters within the game. So I'm hopeful that we'll get dragon-slash-human characters Characters in Natlan as well. I mean, we already have characters like Nilu who not only possess the same red hair as Muratans, but also have horns of the goddess of flowers as her costume, which if it was a concept, it would be what a dragon human would look like. Diluc is also of Muratan descent, but has paler skin than what we see from Vanessa and her tribe, so it's possible that we could also get characters of similar make and design. That said, I'll leave it to Hoyo to explain how a dragon and a human character would be made. Natlan is a region characterized by its hot springs, volcanoes, and a very interesting place that some would call the Sea of Fire or the Sea of Ashes, which we'll get to in a bit. The name Natlan is referenced to Aztlan, the ancestral home of the Aztec people. Translations for Natlan can be Land of Abundance, of Glory, or just straight up Land of Glory. But if used in a literal sense, it means I am in abundance of glory or I am glorious. Natlan is located at the other side of a region of Sumeru's desert known as the Great Red Sand. So before we could even get to Natlan, we would need to go through maybe another patch on Sumeru, probably as a primer patch just like the ones before Fontaine, where we'll likely learn about the possible previous Pyro Archon before Murata, the Lady of Fire, or maybe a new Archon that may have taken the seat after the Cataclysm 500 years ago. Since 5 out of the original 7 Archons have already passed away, we'll likely have another form of current Archon and previous Archon story. But since Natlan is the land of war, its climax and reveal of the previous Archon will be through a battle or a quote-unquote war. Natlan's social structure consists of different tribes, with each tribe having their own separate unique set of rules. With our current information, Natlan might consist of 6 major tribes, which references the tribes of the Aztecs, and the Seven Caverns. Now, I'm sorry if I butchered the names. The Sachimilka, Tulwika, Akulhua, the Tlaxalteca, the Tepaneca, Chalca, and the Mexica or Mexica with Natlan missing a seventh tribe. The Talking Stick mentions six tribes that joined a hero named Tenok in his journey to the Black Mountains with a black turbid tide that would later be named the Mare Jibari, which we'll go over in the Locations segment. Their people, known as Muratans, or Children of Murata, are said to dwell on the volcanic slopes of Natlan. So you could imagine Natlan's multiple tribe civilizations located around or maybe even on volcanoes or caves near the volcanoes. Every Muratan has a very striking red hair color. This paired with their name, Children of Murata, as well as Natlan's translated name, I am in abundance, or I am in abundance of glory, could be pointing towards Murata's children, the abundant 
and proud people of her region. But that's just my opinion. Muratans, or maybe nomadic Muratans, don't actually know about their own Archon, nor do they remember the stories and legends of their region. But they do know about the gods of Celestia as well as their legends. This is evident from a nomadic tribe where Vanessa was from, who roamed the lands and could only learn teachings for survival. The children of Murata are a hardy, strong, and proud people that perform rites of combat as well as celebrating every victory they may have in the name of their Lady of Fire and War. Netland's art of combat, the boxing arts, is likely the only Murata knowledge that Vanessa and her tribe knows about. A possible variation of this combat art is found in Inazuma, known as Shinryu where combatants hone their skills through shadow boxing. This art of combat inspired by Natlan focuses on exercising one's heart to hone one's combat skills. Combat prowess and strength is also an innate ability for the battle-born people of Natlan. Something unique to Natlan is the exceptional quality of its ores as well as the presence, possession, and use of divine flame. The quality of ore that Natlan possesses is likely due to their geography since volcanic activity produces quite a variety of ores as well as other things. One example in Genshin's lore and in real life is obsidian, which can only come from places with volcanic activity. The ancient Aztec people also used obsidian in creating weapons such as the Makwawit, which is where the talking stick is inspired by and where obsidian is also mentioned, of which its name and the names on its description is also taken from the North American and West African talking stick. The rules of war are woven in the womb. The victors shall burn bright, while the losers must turn to ash. These are Dane's Deep's quote regarding Natlan, and it's a secret that the god of war will share to the traveler. Natlan's Archon Quest title is named Incandescent Ode to Resurrection, pointing towards a written poem in celebration of someone's resurrection, rebirth, or return. An ode is a ceremonious poem written to exalt or praise and celebrate a place a person, a thing, or even an idea. Incandescent is to create light through heat. In Natlan's case, it's possibly related to fire. A small description written in Latin below the title that, if translated, states the following. Rise, O strong man, and go to your destined victory. Finally, we have the Agnidus Agates description. A pilgrimage for a wish, a battle to earn a name, burn to cinders for a dream. If the intention yet remains, achieve truth he has. If we take a look at the C and version, it translates to burning wish, raising one's hope. All these titles, names, and descriptions are all linked to Murata's secret to the traveler. Victory means to burn bright, while losing means to turn ash. A pilgrimage that one must take to achieve greatness or an abundance of glory. A right of battle to earn a name and for one to burn to cinders for a dream. Everyone must strive to burn as bright as they can before their destined fate of turning to ash comes. They follow this tradition as a rite of celebration for their resurrection and rebirth or someone else's. This is relative to Natlan's rite of combat and celebrations to Murata during victory. If this refers to their Archon, then maybe Murata is dead and the people of Natlan are continuing her traditions in hopes of her resurrection, but it could also be reflecting the people of Nantlan and their pursuit of their Archon and Regent's ideals. That is, to have abundance of glory and to seek glory in abundance. Since the children of Murata are a proud and strong people and they perform rites of combat in their Archon's name, she who is abundant in glory. You know what else is abundant? Divine flames. And you know what would also be abundant? My channel's analytics. If you like the video, subscribe me if you haven't yet and clicking on the bell to stay updated on my channel. Thank you. Now, let's talk about Natlan's divine flame. This is more of a theory segment than actual lore because as of now, we have no information on what Natlan's divine flame is like, what it does, where it is, and who or what it came from. But the use of divine flames in Natlan is likely a flame that comes from the Archon Murata herself or a primordial variation that originates from Tevat and the Dragon Sovereigns. 
of which there are lots of dragons in Natlan, similar to the Primordial Sea in Fontaine, or maybe even the Ermin Soul in Sumeru. But this time it's about Natlan, and it's about fire. A sort of first flame that existed within Tavat during the Dragon Lord's rule, a form or place of endless flames, and where pyro dragons probably dwelled. Which is a likely thing, place, or person considering we have a character named Shbalanka dubbed one entombed with primal fire. In Mayan mythology, there were twin hero gods named Shbalanka and Hunapu. They were born from Shuwika, the daughter of the underworld god Shibalba. Shibalba is the father of Shuwika, and Shuwika is the twin gods' mother. Shuwika wasn't supposed to have children, so she went to the surface to meet the grandparents of the twins up until the twin gods tricked and defeated Shibalba and later became the sun and moon. Now, there's too much context to make sense of and I won't go too deep into it, but, and this is a big but and it's worth mentioning, if Shibalanka is entombed with primal fire, which could be the sun, then Hunapu would be entombed with something else primal, which symbolizes the moon. It's also worth mentioning that in Aztec mythology, different from Mayan mythology, Quetzalcoatl and Solotl were also sibling gods and are also called the Morning Star and the Evening Star respectively. So it's possible that Shbalanka and his twin brother were dragon sovereigns of fire during the sovereign dragon's rule. So yeah, that's where Shbalanka is from and is likely where their lore in-game will be based off of, which could tell us more about Natlan's divine flames, possibly located within Natlan lands volcanic regions. This leads us to a notable location, the Mare Jivari. One of, or rather the only location we know about Natlan that I could find, was actually mentioned to us since 1.0 in Venti's story quest. Should you be trapped in a windless land actually speaks of a possible place in Natlan called the Mare Jivari. In CN translations, Mare Jivari means the silent sea of ashes. And based on Stanley, the Lava Walker's artifact set, and the talking stick, it was known as the Land of Ashes, the Flaming Sea, or the Sea of Flames. The Mare Jivari is also mentioned as a domain, instead of an actual place, based on Noel's hangout quest. But the talking stick speaks of Mare Jivari as a bunch of mountains covered in darkness. Things worth noting about the Mare Jivari is that it is a place where an adventurer's journey would end and where nearly no one would want to stay for long. This is likely the flames, smoke, lava, and ashes from all the volcanic activity. Some notable characters that have gone to the Mare Jivari are the lone and tribeless hero Tenok and his six allies from Natlan's six tribes. Tenok as well as his six allies are inspired from the names of African folklore as well as Mesoamerican cultures. These seven warriors ventured into the Black Mountains along with their cryptid-like companions to face a turbid black tide before it would be called the Mare Jivari. We also have Stanley who ventured into the Mare Jivari meeting what he describes as an evil beast who created a whirlpool. Stanley's stories aren't exactly accurate but if we're talking about beasts, the Lava Walker are Artifact set mentions a phoenix that resides within the Sea of Flames of the Mare Jivari. This phoenix was said to be singing and flapping its wings in the flames. People would worship it as a totem while kings would see it as a form of nobility. Whether this was an evil beast or not is up to speculation. The phoenix could be similar to the Thunderbird of Surumi, Kapatsir, revered and respected by laymen and nobles alike. The Lava Walker set mentions a sage that walked into the flaming sea of Mare Jivari and lived there until his final moments before burning up and turning into cinders or ash. We also have Bennett's backstory and abilities which were previously theorized that he was from Natlan. His ultimate would resemble what a divine flame could be like and would also be linked to the healing or resurrection just from this skill alone since he's the only pyro character that can actually heal. Finally, we have Yansan whose name is inspired from Yoruba mythology. Yansan or Oya is a warrior goddess that presides over fire, lightning, hurricanes, as well as death 
and Rebirth, a recurring state as well as the main Archon quest of Natlan. Yansan could also be related to Bennett due to her white hair and circular ability similar to Bennett's ultimate, which could also be related to the Divine Flames. Now with all that said, the nature of the Mare Juvari mentioned by current sources as well as every character that I've mentioned so far that are related or has gone to the Mare Juvari makes it the perfect candidate for holding Natlan's Divine Flames. And it's also possible that Shbalanka, one entombed with Primal Fire, would be found here too. Not as a phoenix, but the Dragon Sovereign of Fire. We may also find his sibling. Hunapu. The characteristics of Mare Javari also fit what we know from Nouvellet as the Endless Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire, or the Circumpacific Belt, is a connection or path along the Pacific Ocean characterized by recurring earthquakes and volcanic activity. We could liken that the Mare Javari would also possess the same characteristics. One of the Fatui Harbingers, Capitano, has recently been deployed into Natlan. In patch 3.1, Il Capitano was given orders to head for Natlan after interacting with Varka, the Grand Master of the Favonius Knights. Capitano is known for his combat ability and his near overwhelming strength and power. The captain is also known for what Scaramouche calls absolute righteousness, meaning that whatever he is doing, good or bad, is because what he does is right. This level of righteousness doesn't even take his own personal strength into account. The reason I state this is because Natlan and its people are a hardy, proud, and strong region that fight in combat as a form of rights, which are not simple fist fights or angry brawls, but is a ritual tradition of the people from Natlan. Likely some of these fights are about who is stronger or who has a better say in their perspective, which can be inferred from Tenok and the Talking Sticks lore. Righteousness is the quality of being morally right or being justifiable. If both sides think that they are in the right, they must perform a right of combat to determine who is morally correct. Victors burn bright while losers must turn to ash. And Capitano is said to have joined the Endless Ring of Fire. So if someone possesses absolute righteousness, then enters a right of combat for who is more righteous, then we can expect quite a clash between the strengths, moral ambiguities, and ideals of each side within that Ring of Fire. This, I think, is Natlan's or Murata's current concept of war. And there we go, everything we know or at least I could find about Natlan's lore plus a little bit of theory at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Comment below, is Natlan's dragons gonna be actual humanoid dragons or are we finally getting mounts in the game? Now, since we've just finished Fontaine's Archon Quest, I'm thinking it's time to talk a bit about Natlan. So expect more videos of this format and this topic down the line. But that's it from me, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like Come if you enjoy, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!